Hey, they told me you were in here. What? Hey, buddy, it looks like we got ourselves a live one. What are you talking about? Well, I laid that lure down real nice. I feel a twitch on the end of the line. <laughs> what are you talking about? I got a call from Jordan Scott, Kingfish himself. Wants to see me today. Did he say what it was about? Well, I get the feeling he doesn't want to know what the outcome of the presidential election was. Yeah. He said he didn't want to talk about it over the phone. Oh, that sounds important. Sounds like reeling in your debts time to me. Yeah. I gotta admit, this could be just what we've been waiting for. Yep. Yeah, I feel it in my bones. Larry, I hope you know exactly what you're getting involved in. Now, look, don't start on me again, okay? No, you want I... me to get cold feet? I just want to make sure that you're being careful. I can't stop now, even if I wanted to. And I don't want to. Just be careful. You and I both know that Jordan Scott is capable of anything if he thinks he's been used. Well, you meaning murder? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. To our very successful partnership. An auspicious beginning. To tiny bubbles. And big dividends. Mm. Say, this stuff is good enough to drink. Nothing but the best, my friend. I can't tell you, Jason, how happy it made me to, for you to make the decision to stay on with us at the club. Yeah, well, I thought long and hard about it, and I really didn't like much the idea of starting all over again. Good thinking. Plunging in a new might be all right for Mitch, but in my case, I figure an old dog shouldn't try to learn a new trick. I'm better off where I am. I think you're much better off where you are. Much. I appreciate the opportunity. So do we. We. The uh, mutual admiration society we just formed. I see. And now that everything's settled, I've got a proposition for you. Russ, am I interrupting? Oh, no, not at all. I'll be with you in just a second. No, no, I'm just stopping by to see if our meeting is still on for this afternoon. Absolutely. Okay. Olivia. Yeah. Um, Listen, I wanted to tell you, uh, Rick and I had a little talk yesterday. Oh? Yeah, I offered him an internship in the new emergency care unit. Oh. And now, the continuing story of another world. something better to do with your time off? Well, you can talk. I gotta keep my fingers nimble. Oh, the nimble fingers trick, eh? Mm. Takes practice. I'm still only delivering at half the speed of the professionals. You too busy to talk? Go ahead. I figure your fingers have had enough exercise for the day. It makes me nervous. What's up? Something unexpected. I had a talk with Russ Matthews yesterday. You okay? No further complications, I hope. Just that my brain capacity has been doubled. I'll be considered a genius, that's all. Oh, well, we knew that all along. Um, no, I'm fine. Uh, apparently, the virus is almost completely out of my system, and but for a few after effects, I'm back in shape. So what did Doc Matthews want to tell you? I mean, since you're such a fine specimen. He offered me ship in the new emergency care unit. That's great. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, I, uh... Well, judging by your relation, I guess you're not too uh, proud of the offer. I don't know. I've been tossing the idea around. And... Yeah. Like a hot chestnut. Why don't you try and pick it up? I might get burned. I've been working in the lab a long time now, you know. I yeah, always did like that, huh, that stuff? I did. I did. But working in the lab is very different, you know. It's nothing like being a doctor and dealing with on-the-spot decisions. Research is a vital area in the field of medicine, but it's not involved with the same kind of life and death issues the way a normal a doctor's existence is. Hmm. I never thought of it that way. So what you're saying is you're not sure you want to cope with the responsibility of being an ordinary doctor? It's not that I don't want to. I'm not sure I can. I figure my stress level factor is pretty low right now. Can't cope with the pressure, huh? I wasn't able to in the past. What makes me think I've changed? So you're going to turn Russ down? No, 
I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> Guess I'm heading that direction. Just because you couldn't cope with pressure in the past doesn't mean you can't do it now. Rick, you really want this internship? It's one of the few things I think left in my life that I really do want. And now, don't keep me in suspense, Jordan. What is this proposition you feel we should discuss? No, it was something that was inspired by Ilse Fred. What about her? Well, we in the business, um, a lot of respect for Ilse. She seems to have things very well organized in Vegas. Too you say? well, yes, too well. Huh? That's it? I'm just agreeing, yes. Well, as you know, she's uh, not only got that health club, but a uh, very lucrative escort service. Yeah, I know. Well, we're so impressed with it that uh, in its success, we're thinking of following through. Right here in Bay City? Or don't you think this town may be a little conservative? No. I think you'll find that we fill an empty spot in people's lives. Think how many lonely hearts will flock to our service. And some of the not-so-lonely, just for variety. Variety? Oh, different face, different place. I presume that's where it will stop, at the face. Oh, this is a strictly legitimate operation. No extras under the table. Escort services aren't illegal. Not even in this state. No, but the fringe benefits can be. Oh, I'm talking completely clean with a capital C. It stands for class. I don't need any hassles with the law. Oh, speaking of C's, we decided to change the name of the club to The Connection. Get it? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> it sounds good. You know, yeah, this could be a good business if it's organized well. And if we don't give the public the impression that anything illegal is going on. Exactly the way I look at it. I'm glad we see eye to eye. It's a good start. How do you intend going about getting it off the ground? Well, my first suggestion is for you to get in touch with Ilsa. Fill her in on our plans and uh, see if you can't get her to lend a hand. You know, just uh, a few suggestions, preliminary advice, nothing heavy. Uh, nobody knows the business like Ilsa. Well, that's for sure. I'll call her. Uh, one other thing. Um, as you know, Blaine and I have been working very closely together. Uh, she's a very experienced coordinator of affairs at the arena. And my boss, Jess Cooper, has decided to extend her training a little further. So she'll be working in very close conjunction with you at the club. In what capacity? Well, nothing that would intrude on your turf. I mean, you'll still be running the place. You're 40 percent, at least. Now, just think of her as a uh, company representative. You know, Jordan, I've been running that club a long time. I don't need someone looking over my shoulder. I know what to do. I never doubted that, Jason. And I'm sure you and Blaine will work things out. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps you're right. I'll catch up to her sometime today if I can. And one word of warning. Blaine's a good person with a, a high moral value. So when you mention the escort service, make sure you let her know that it's a completely legal operation. Otherwise, it will scare her off. We don't want that. Got it? Uh, Jordan, I heard you wanted to see me in here. <laughs> Hello, Larry. Come on in. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. I can just hang around. Oh, we're just finishing up, aren't we, Jason? Yes, that's right. Um, we're just uh, having a little light refreshment here. Uh, coffee breaks are bad for my nerves. Now, this might be a good time to talk to Blaine. Why don't you go out and see if uh, she's available? Yeah, sure, sure, I'll do that. Um, Jordan, thank you for the hospitality. Any time. Well, we'll talk later. Yeah. And, uh, Jason, mm. would you uh, close the door on your way out? Sure. Sit down. Okay. Champagne? No, thanks. Getting ready, huh? What? The house, the big move. Oh, yeah, the move, right. Uh, we're moving in tomorrow. Ah, that's great news. That's great something. It's a real zoo over there. We've been living out of boxes and cartons for the past couple of days. I'll be glad when it's over. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, but you'll get settled in soon enough. Um, 
And when you do, I want an invitation. You got it. In fact, you can stop by tomorrow and help us do some moving. I'm supplying all the beer. <laughs> Thanks, but I think I'll pass. All right. Hey, I just thought we could just trade off a little bit. I hear you're making a move. Oh, well, you heard. Yeah, from Blaine. Little sister's moving up in the world. I think uh, Blaine's please. She seems to be. Well, what is it you want me to do for you? Fix a few parking tickets? Hardly. That's a serious matter of law and order. Uh, <laughs> no, I just heard that you were uh, assigned to investigate the accidents that happened down the Corey Holloway uh, construction site. Is that right? Yeah. You heard right. Can I ask why? Why what? Why you heard. Oh, yeah, well, uh, as you might know, our company has a project down there. It's called the West End Project. Yeah, that rings a bell. Well, we've been real lucky so far. No accidents, no delays. We like to keep it that way. Meaning what? Well, I'm uh, just starting to become concerned. Oh, yeah, I hear you. Well, it's all the bad press that the Cory uh, project's getting. I'm afraid some of it's going to rub off on us. Well, I don't see how it could. Well, you know, one bad apple makes everybody else look bad. Uh, it seems to me it'd be the other way around. Their problems make you look good. Your guys do it better. Yeah, well, I guess it could go that way. But let's just say, on the other hand, that if the accidents get more frequent, they keep going, it opens up a whole hornet's nest, and they shut both projects down. That could hurt us. Yeah, I, I don't understand uh, exactly what it is you want me to do. Well, we're, we're not asking you to do anything like it. Well, what are you asking? Just simply keep your eyes open. And when you see what the other guys are doing wrong, just let us know. That's all you want me to do? Well, well, that's all I could ask you to do. Isn't it? Hello? Hello. Is this Ilsa Fredericks? Yes. This is Jason Dunlap. Oh, Jason, darling. Uh, how lovely to hear from you again. Are you in town? No, no, I'm home. Bay City. Oh, well, how good it is to hear your voice and sounding so good. Oh, I was so sad by our last meeting that it was, um... Was what? Oh, marred by unpleasant circumstances. Yeah. So, how can I help you? Oh, we could use your advice, Ilsa. Uh, advice? Lots of people ask my advice. They don't always use it. Uh, and who is we? Your friend, Jordan Scott. Oh, Jordan. Why didn't you say so? Anything for Jordan. What are you two boys up to? Oh, we've gone into partnership in a restaurant. How delicious. And we're thinking of setting up an escort service. Well, that's a different kind of menu, isn't it? Yes, uh, since your operation is so successful, Jordan hoped maybe you could give us the benefit of your experience. Of course. We all have to stick together, yes? But I'll give you more than just my advice. How's that? I'll send you Melissa Needham. Uh, you may have met her briefly when you were here. Uh, she's been working for me for several years and knows the business inside and out. I think she could be of great assistance to you, yes? Yes. That's very kind of you. It's my pleasure. Uh, there's just one thing you need to remember. What? Uh, Melissa is just out on loan. This is not a permanent transfer. Like a library book, a reference book. If you uh, keep her too long or lose her, you pay a fine. Understood? Of course, um, you're, uh, you're being very generous. <laughs> I'm always generous. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for uh, Melissa. Uh... Need him. As in uh, meeting your needs? Yes. My needs. Goodbye, Elsa. Thanks for 
finding the time to see me. I need a sounding board. My self-sufficient brother asking me for help? I'm not asking for anything. I'm just asking for somebody to listen. Now, if you don't want to do that. Don't be silly. I'm flattered, that's all. Uh, you know, if you got an idea, bounce it off me. I'll tell you what I think. This is what I'm afraid of. Anyway, I'm going on. Russ Matthews has offered me an internship in the new emergency care unit. You're not thinking of uh, accepting, are you? <laughs> you know, that's what I really like about you, Kate. You're so subtle, so tactful. Look, I, I'm sorry. I'm surprised that you're even thinking about it. Why? I've been to med school just like any other doctor in this hospital. I am fully trained. Look, I know that. I just thought that you liked the lab. I do. It's been a great hiding hole while I've needed it. What does that mean? It's safe. Isolated from the mainstream. There's no pressure. Certainly, certainly haven't been faced with many tough decisions staring down a microscope, that's for sure. Right. Now, wasn't that the point? That you didn't want to confront humanity as a large group. The demands, the decision-making, the pressures of dealing with people on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I mean, I thought that you didn't want to work in that kind of a pressurized work situation. I was younger when I made that decision. I had to work through a lot of things. And it was very convenient to lock myself in that laboratory. But I think I've matured a little now. And you were just as convinced that you could handle the pressures of med school. And you lied to yourself for so long that by the time you faced the truth... I was on a prescription drug syndrome. Thank you, Kit. It nearly killed you. I'm not trying to dampen your spirits. <laughs> well, maybe I am. But I'm not going to let that happen to you all over again. Pretty certain that I've worked through all this. Don't you see? I don't have that pressure hanging over me anymore. I want to spread my wings. But I need your support. I need to feel you're backing me up. I don't want to plunge into this thing thinking that you're thinking that it's a bad idea. Now, you know me. So you, you know what I'm capable, or pretty well. But I want to do this, Kit. More than anything, this is what I want to do now. I'm behind you. <laughs> All the way. Thank you. On one condition. Oh, I knew there had to be a catch in here somewhere. It's not a catch. But it's something I think you owe yourself and Russ Matthews. What's that? I think you've got to level with him about the drug. I guess the first and most important thing is that the supper club is going to get a complete and thorough facelift. People won't recognize the place. What we're going to be seeking, Blaine, is a much younger, more hip clientele. That is where the market is today. And now that the, the disco is closed, young and single people uh, have a gap. There's a need for a, for a place where they can meet. We are going to fill that gap, and we're going to transform the supper club into a singles bar. Then you'll, we'll be aiming entirely at young people. Definitely. That's why you are so important. That's why you are such an invaluable asset. Anyone is not excluded to come along. But the older folks in Bay City have their restaurants, they have the arena. Mm -hmm. Young people are left out on a limb. So it's up to us to provide them with a meeting place. I see. You seem very sold on this point. Of course. It's a winner. And yet it doesn't bother you at all that all you've done in terms of constructing an image and clientele will all be erased. Changes are healthy. I'm due for some changes in my life. Well, have you discussed anything with Jordan as far as uh, changing over the club? Oh, yeah. The first thing was to hook into a name that would be appropriate to express the purpose of the club. Mm. We came up with the connection. What do you think? 
a good name for a singles bar. Exactly. Exactly what Jordan and I thought, too. And then that guy of yours, I tell you, Blaine, he has some of the most brilliant ideas. He topped all our ideas by coming up with a real showstopper. Trust Jordan. What was it? Well, modeling it after an already established and highly successful system in Las Vegas, we are going to operate, set up and operate right out of the club, Bay City's first escort service. Well, I'm happy to say it looks like we've come up with one of the scarcest commodities of all. A 25-hour day. A head nurse. Aha, uh -huh, that is important. Do you know her? Yes. Who is she? My sister. Your sister? She's not even a nurse. Well, of course she is. She's a very good nurse. Pat? Not Pat, another sister. Oh, I see. You have a ready supply of sisters. Uh, smacks a bit of nepotism, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> is she good? She's excellent nurse, yes. Well, then we'll be lucky to have her. What's her name? Alice. Alice Frame. Alice Frame. L like in Jamie Frame? Yes. Exactly like in Jamie Frame. Well, that's, that's not a very common name. Is there a connection? Yes. Well, what's the connection? My sister Alice's husband, Steve Frame, mm -hmm. was Jamie's father. So, either before or after his marriage to Alice, Rachel um, and Steve were... I was married to Rachel at the time. Oh, well, I guess I'm stepping on some toes. That's quite all right. It's just family stuff, best forgotten. Russ, I'm sorry. There's no need to be. It's ancient history. Uh, I did tell you, didn't I, that I had offered an internship to Rick Holloway? Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think? I think um, it might be very good for Rick. Well, for us, too, wouldn't you agree? I guess it'll work out. Well, no wonder you can never find a policeman on the street when you need one. Us boys in blue do inside work now and then. Even when you're not in blue? That's right. Meaning? Meaning this isn't a social call. Or a caffeine fix. I came by on police business. Oh, what's up, Larry? My liquor license expired? My trash can's too big or something? What? I've been requested by the Las Vegas Police Department to stop by. And do what? Ask you a few questions about Tracy's death. Oh. Well, I'm afraid I can't be of much use. Why not? Because I don't have any information. Well, you I don't know what happened at that accident. Would you mind answering a few questions? Of course not. I'd do anything to get to the bottom of that mystery. Well, that's what we all want now, isn't it? Certainly. Well, let's get started. Ask away. All right. I understand that you arranged a car to pick up Russ Matthews at the airport. That's right. Why, is that usual? As a special favor to Tracy. Well, where'd you get it? Oh, oh wow. Who can remember something like that? Well, why not? Well, it wasn't exactly a memorable name. I found it in the phone book in the yellow pages. Uh, maybe if I saw it again, I'd remember it. Maybe your hotel bill has some number we can check out. Yeah. I'm uh, sorry I can't be of more help. It's okay. Uh, we'll go on to something else. Sure. And there's something that did puzzle me. Well, what's that? Well, you sent a car out to the airport. Yes, well, I already told you why. Sure. But what were you doing there? Well, you know, some of those outfits in Vegas are so flaky. <laughs> they never called the car company, never called to confirm. So I drove out to the airport myself. To pick up Russ? Yes, that's right. I wanted to make sure the limousine showed. Kind of like wearing suspenders in a belt. Kind of. But I didn't want to blow it for Tracy. She wanted that visit to be perfect. So you didn't even know that Tracy was going out to the airport to meet Russ? That wasn't the plan. Well, what was the plan? that Russ should come directly from the airport to Tracy's suite. You can ask Russ. I already talked to him. Hey, Larry, go easy on Russ. A, a poor guy, 
It must be hurting. Oh, well, he's managing, all things considered. Well, it must be tough on him. Oh, I'm sure it is. I was just Tracy's manager. Russ was her husband. That's very interesting. Russ seems to think he knows who that bomb was meant for. Who? Him. I don't know. I don't know who that bomb was meant for. I do know one thing, though, for sure. Hmm? What's that? I'd give anything if it hadn't been Tracy. Well, that'll be all for now. Listen, if you do happen to remember something that can help us out, why don't you give me a call? Sure. I'd give anything if it hadn't been Tracy. And someday, somehow, Somebody's going to pay for what happened to Tracy. They say it's death for anyone who interrupts a nurse in her coffee break. Well, I'll remember to put a potion in your coffee when you're not lucky. Love potion? Guess I uh, interfered with your research. Is it important? <laughs> Terribly unimportant. This can hardly be considered research, no matter how you look at it. Uh, what are you doing here, anyway? I'm meeting someone. Well, not me. So who? Curiosity killed the cat. Give up. Larry. Larry? <coughs> now, what's a lawyer meeting a policeman in a hospital cafeteria for, anyway? Well, convenient location, good prices, and if you get indigestion, there's plenty of help available. Indigestion uh, being an inevitable side effect in this place. Oh, you got a thing about the food here, don't you? Well, I've got a gripe about something. <laughs> I must admit, though, that there was a devious plot behind my coming here. What's that? Well, I figure if I planned it just right, I might run into you. You know, your strategy was flawless and your timing mm. perfect. Step one of the plan has succeeded. Is it step two? Step two is to find out if you're available Friday night, because I would love to take you out. I'd love to, but I'm going out of town next week. I'm taking the week off to do a, a seminar in Detroit on emergency care procedures. I am going to miss you, Kit. I'm going to miss you, too. It's only a week. Then I will make a fast addition to my scheme of things. Step three. <laughs> Ask if she'll see me one week from Friday. You know, for a guy who's got things so well worked out, you'd certainly take a little while getting there. You'll be free? I thought you'd never ask. Well, it pays to go slow with things. I mean, I can't give the lady the impression that I'm a fast worker. Jess! Well, how I what a nice surprise. I didn't know you were in town. Hello, Blaine. I know I can always count on a warm welcome from you. Oh, of course. <laughs> Even when I do arrive unexpectedly. There's no one we're more glad to see than you. Right, Jordan? Most definitely. Can I get you a drink? Jordan's long taken care of that need. Good. My main reason for being here, Blaine, is the supper club. Well, with all that Jordan's been putting together lately, I thought it about time I was brought in on the changes. Well, it's good news, isn't it? That place has so much potential, we're going to have crowds just lining up right away. <laughs> oh, that's what I like about you, Blade. You're never short on optimism. <laughs> Positive thinking is what makes people successful. What do you think of Jordan's idea to make it into a singles bar? Nothing short of a stroke of genius. Well, thanks, Jess. Uh, did you get a chance to talk to Jason Dunlap before he left? Mr. Dunlap was here. Oh, yeah, it was a little while ago. I must meet him soon. Well, I'll arrange a meeting for you whenever it's convenient. Yes, I did see Mr. Dunlap downstairs. He filled me in on all your latest ideas. He seems very excited about this project. That's just as well, since he has no choice. What's he like anyway, this oh. Jason Dunlap? He's OK. I don't think we have anything to worry about in his direction. In fact, I think he'll fit in very smoothly with our operation. A company boy at heart? Something like that. That's just what I like to hear. It's better for all concerned if he knows where his loyalties lie. Well, if he doesn't. I'll soon find out. But keep it sweet. After all, Blaine has to work with the man. My sentiments, exactly. Oh, did he get to tell you about our new name for the club? Yes, the connection. Well, what do you think? Oh, I think it's a grand idea. It certainly conveys the, the intention of the club, and yet it's very sophisticated. Did he uh, mention our, our other idea? Yes, he did. We'd appreciate your input on that one, Blaine. 
What do you honestly think of the idea of putting in an escort service at the connection? I realize you might want a bit of time to think about it. I have been thinking about it ever since Jason mentioned it to me. I guess I have a question. Go ahead. Do you really think Bay City is ready for an escort service? I'm sure they're very popular in places like Reno and Las Vegas, but... Not Bay City. Well, I'm just not sure about it. It would be a, a great investment for us. We'd have to hire a lot of people to staff it, and I'm just not so sure we should get in over our heads for something that might not work out. You have a point. But our escort service is going to be a little different from the ones in Vegas or Reno. How so? Well, you know, some of those services offer more than just escort service. How so more? <laughs> well, they uh, offer a little extra fringe benefit for a fee. I guess I knew that. I guess that's why I was wondering whether or not Bay City was ready. Well, you don't have to wonder. Our operation will be a strictly out in the open escort service. No fringes provided. Oh. In that case, I think maybe it will have a chance. <laughs> at least not at first. to um, absorb the atmosphere, did you? No, no, I didn't. You been giving some thought to what we discussed? I don't think I've thought about anything else. Well, and I, I hope you don't feel pressured. <laughs> pressured? Yes, since you're making a decision. <laughs> that's funny, pressured. It's... Uh, Rick, that's not on my list of fun words. No, no, it's what I've been thinking about, pressure. And, and if I could handle it or not. Well, why couldn't you? We all have to face it. It's unpleasant, but we cope. Some of us better than others. Meaning? This is what I want to talk to you about. I really want to take the, the, the offer that you've given me. I really do. Well, that's great. But, I mean, I'm delighted. Wait a minute, but you've got to promise to listen to me first. Yes, of course. And, and, and once you've listened to me, then make your decision. What decision, Rick? whether I'm the man for the job or not. Well, I've already made the offer. No, you may want to take it back. Anyway, is it a deal? Yes, okay, it's a deal. Yesterday you mentioned my med school grades. Yes, they were very good. But they were up and down. In the beginning they were up and, and, and then they were down. I noticed that they were exceptional during the first three years, and then, yes, in the last year, they did fall off a bit. A bit? <laughs> yes, it sometimes happens. Even the best students ease up a little after the long haul. I didn't ease up, Russ. I, I let go. I almost fell off the edge. It, it, uh, it was a disaster, is, is what it was. Rick, I think you're exaggerating. Your average was still very good. And I'm sure there must be some reason for what happened in that last year. Oh, yeah, there, there was a reason, all right. Uh, and uh, the reason had to do with pressure. What kind of pressure? Any pressure. Every pressure. I was under pressure from my father to be the best med student since they, since they invented aspirin. And in order to do that, I had to study constantly. So I studied day and night. I became a 24-hour grind. And soon my body was saying, hey, cut it out, kid. But I didn't listen. I, I'm a med student, and I didn't listen. So when I was tired, but I didn't have time to sleep, I started take, uh, taking the infamous. Black Beauties. And then uh, when I did find a couple minutes when I could get some rest, but I was so keyed up from the uppers that I couldn't sleep, I uh, had to get my hands on some sedatives. Your prescription drug 
downers. It's easy to get. That was the problem. And my body didn't know after a while whether it should be up or down, and neither did I. I was taking reds and blacks and a handful of white crosses. And pretty soon it did. took me in the wrong door of the hospital. They wheeled me into the emergency room. Not breathing with a heart and blood pressure that didn't exist. Anyway, as you can see, I'm still here after they got me to breathe again. And, uh... And, uh, I shook for several days while the drugs worked their way out of my system. And then I had regular side effects, malnutrition and dehydration and the rest. The overdrawn bank account syndrome. Yeah. And I swore then that I would never, ever put myself in a high-pressure situation. Which is why you decided to drop out of the practice of medicine. I decided to drop out. Got pressure cook. Okay. And now? And now, I feel like I can handle it. The question is, do you want somebody with a past like mine on your staff. If that's just a snack, you're gonna get real fat. It's lunch. A bit late. Yeah, I didn't get to eat all day. Besides, I talked to Jordan Scott and it turned my stomach sour. Hey, how'd it go? Not a bite. Dropped every line I could think of. Guy's so smart, man. He didn't even nibble. So he didn't ask anything of you? Well, nothing that's not in the books. Seems like he's treading real careful with you. Yeah, I know. It's also legal. Makes me even more suspicious. He must really have something in store for me. I take it then that he did ask something of you. Yeah, he found out I'm on the investigation team. He's checking out his accidents down at the dock. He wants me to keep my eyes open. That's all? Yeah, I check out their mistakes so his company doesn't make the same ones. We don't have a leg to stand on with that information. I know that. He's treating me like cotton wool. I mean, I've given him every single hint I could think of. He's just not using me the way we'd hoped. Yet. Yet. We should get it over and done with. I feel like a lamb being led to slaughter. You know, there's something else that's really bothering me, too. What's that? I got a call today from the commissioner's office. I have a meeting with Odell. Oh, no, that's strange. I got the same call. You got any idea what it's about? No. Oh, I just hope they haven't found out about us. All we need is for them to blow our cover after we've gone so far. Oh, God. It's gonna be a drag. After all this, huh? You know, Zachary Colton knows about that loan I got from Jordan Scott. Yeah, you told me. I mean, how he found out about that, I'll never know. He's got a nose as long as a broomstick. Nothing gets by him. True, he is in a position to come by the right information if he chooses to ask for it. You think Odell knows about that loan? Maybe. You know, it isn't going to look good for you taking that money from Scott, no matter what the circumstances. I knew that from the beginning. I mean, I didn't want to win a Mr. Popular contest, or I wouldn't have taken this assignment. Hey, hey, wait, there could be something else this meeting's all about. What? Remember I told you that I helped out Mac and Jamie when they were going after Rachel? Well, yeah, you told me about it, but you didn't say how. I just gave them a head start. But after that, the agents kept you pretty much in the background. I guess they figured out what I did. And if they were professionals, they probably went straight to Zachary Colton. 
Oh, you could be right. Well, I think it's just gonna pay to check out all sides, be prepared, all right? Yeah. Here, Joey, I'll give you a hand. Give the glasses, please. Look like the lady in the, the Brand B soap commercial. Take it easy. That glass won't make it to its spotty adolescence. Hey, why so happy? I mean, uh, why all the smiles and the laughter? Ah, Joey. It's just not working out the way I wanted it. What? Yeah. What, the search for world peace? You know that Jess Cooper is going to be taking over the soap, supper club, don't you? Yeah, I heard a rumor. I also understand that you're going to be taking over the joint. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Great. Should be pleased. Yeah, I thought I would be. But you're not. Even I can guess that. You want to tell me about it? What's this big tragedy about? Joey, what do you know about escort services? Not much, except there's a whole lot of them in Reno. Well, um, Jason Dunlap is going to be running one out of the new supper club. I don't want to be naive. But what? I'm not sure I know exactly what they are. Well, Blaine, is. uh... Services and their services. Depends on what you want to do with it. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Another Work.